my children or my grandchildren, you will never do this. Thank you very much. announcements and then Peg will open up the floor for questions. First of all, I feel inspired. How do you feel right now? Okay. I also, when I had a conversation, by the way, I'm Donna Calorio, so I forgot to introduce myself the first time around. Um, when I first talked to Peg um, about what her speech should be like today, I asked her to specifically going on the park in the testing. And the reason I said that is because Common Core Forum, which is the group that um, hosted this forum tonight, has decided that we're gonna go full force and assist and help students and parents to opt out of the park testing in the park districts this year. So we are doing a full-fledged campaign, like a campaign you would do for a state rep or a governor or a city councilor or a school committee member. We have signs made up. We have groups started. We're gonna have one woman that's gonna have 28 people in her home and talk education. And this is where it begins. Invite people in your home. If you don't think you can handle the conversation yourself, you call me up. I'll come to your home with you. Shannon will come. Dave will come. Dean will come. Or any of us will come. Some of you will come. It all begins at the grassroots, and we know we can do this, because you know what, it's our children. And a lot of you have young kids, and this is what we really have to do. We have to educate the parents that have the young kids, because they really don't understand what's happening. So make sure that, you know, I have a sign-up sheet in back. Make sure you put your name on it so I can put you on the list and when other things occur. Or if you have questions, just email me directly. You know, I'll give you my... Uh, dcalorio at gmail.com, but I mean, just come up to me afterwards. But the key is, it's parents reaching parents. And then, what we're going to do is, because our superintendents, anybody get this one, our school committee members, not you Summer, not you Dave, aren't listening to us, then what are we going to do? We're going to replace them with, guess who? You. We're gonna replace them with you. We're gonna replace them with the parents that have the kids in the system, that have the passion, that have the education, that have the open-mindedness to make a difference in our community and in our state. That will work with our state reps like Representative Colonel's back there, who's willing to listen to us. And you can ask Kevin when the first time he heard about Common Core. You know, I don't know if it was that long ago, Kevin, was it? Uh, actually, when you were on the school committee, I came out tonight and you guys were discussing it. Part of the school okay, so he heard it from me when I was on the school committee. So we're educating our state reps, and we have, we're very, very lucky that we have state reps, like Kevin, and there's a few others that will listen to us and say, we will help work with you and your kids because we're doing what's in best interest of your kid. And then if they won't change, then we're gonna get them out. Because we have the power, we have the vote. Like Peg said, get behind them, write him a check. Hold his sign, make 10 phone calls. And we're gonna do that with Common Core too. We're gonna do that with Common Core and Park, we're gonna call our friends up and we're gonna say, come over my house, I wanna talk education. I don't know everything, but I have a friend that's gonna come over. Her name is Shannon, and she's gonna to talk to us, and she's gonna come and sit, and we're gonna have coffee in Danish, and we're gonna talk and talk about the homework we're being brought home. That's where it begins. So I feel inspired tonight. I feel fortunate tonight that we had such a expert in her field in our field, Common Core and Park, come to us and, and enlighten us about some of the things that we needed to be enlightened on because we can only go so far in our conversations. Because if I hear one more time that, I love Common Core, 
well, why do you love it so much? Oh, it's just better than Massachusetts standards. And then you don't have any recourse. Well, we need to know why Common Core is not as good as Massachusetts standards, and I'm hoping Peg kind of shed a little light. And she said, be educated. Chances are we're much more educated than the people that are running our state, let me tell you. Okay? So once again, we're going to open up for questions. I can, um, I'll just, I'll direct the questions. Peggy, you can take the mic. And um, you're going to stick around just a little bit afterwards because you're going to start traveling back down to Pennsylvania. Um, but I want to get a couple questions in. Okay, uh, Kevin? Yes. Actually, it's not a question. I just wanted to comment on uh, this, this morning. Uh, we had a rally outside the state house. Uh, and I, I think it went very, very well. I, I think uh, it was, you know, reasonably well attended. Um, but uh, I was disappointed uh, as far as the showing uh, for my colleagues. There were 160 members of the House of Representatives, and there were four of us there this morning. Um, so it was uh, Representative Jim Lyons from Andover, uh, Representative Jeff Deal from Whitman, uh, myself, and Representative Leah Cole from Peabody. If your state rep is not one of four of us, please reach out to them, ask them where they stand on Common Core, encourage them to get educated on what it really means, and ask them to go to the next rally outside the State House. It's important. It sends a message. So I would just leave that with all of you. So if, if your rep is not one of the four that I just listed, please reach out to them. Because I think it's important that they hear from you. That's really all awesome. Very good. I'd like to just say thank you for to everyone who put this on this evening. Um, and Peg, thank you for taking time to come out. Uh, I used to live in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, a few years ago. I'll be driving uh, through there on my way home to it. was a great place to grow up. Um, well, one thing I was curious about is, will this video be available? Is there a way that it can be put online so we can download it? Um, Michael's our video talk, video, Videographer, yeah. It will be. It will be. That's and fantastic. We'll post it on YouTube. The fact that it's Massachusetts centric would make it very helpful yes. to suggest yes. some parts. If you send me a link, I'll add it to my so website as well. This support, and I thank you for doing it. And we have to thank Peg because when I asked her to really be specific to Massachusetts, yeah. she really she went in and she did some more extra additional it research to, to bring yeah. this because these were things. I mean, I I have so many notes because it's so it was so specific to what our contracts look like and, you know, our negotiations. Great. And it was so spot on. It's really great. Yes. Just a, a couple very specific questions. Yes. So what happened with David Coleman? Why wasn't he hired when he applied to, to teach in New York? Um, there's, all that we had is that the New York system said they declined to hire him. They chose other folks instead of him. Well, he had no education degree. He didn't um, have, well, he was a Rhodes Scholar. Yeah, he um, Yes, but they hired, New York could have, but they, ch they chose not to, and that's all we know. Right. My second question is, I think in 95, the College Board recentered the SAT scores, essentially lower. Raise, well, or raising them, that's my memory. They did, they loved, they raised, because they added the, the essay question, yeah. but the academic standards within them were actually lowered. They centered them down. That's uh, what I meant, right. So it made everyone feel better. Yes. What, what was the, what, a stupid question, what was the reason for, for doing that? Because the kids were failing. So this was make everybody happy, yeah. despite the substance yes. behind it. Okay. Um, also, was curious uh, um, in Massachusetts when the uh, the governor here was very quick to sign on to the race for the top race uh, race to the top to get that money even before much was really known. I think about the changes to the curriculum and testing that this would entail. He has made the statement that don't worry, guys. You know, if it turns out that the Common Core standards are not what we expect from MCAS, we'll be allowed to adjust uh, our teaching. So uh, they, the, the way you said it was Common Core will have to meet us. They'll have to come and so we will not be lowering our standards. But it would seem like that really won't be possible. No, it is not possible. And actually, the, uh, you had to sign, to get the race to the top money, you had to, in writing, sign a memorandum of understanding with Achieve, which is the company that was sort of the centerpiece of this, saying that you would adopt all of the Common Core standards. You cannot change or subtract. You can add up to 15%, but you can't change what's there. Yeah. So you can't make them different. You had to, you had to swallow them. Uh, Massachusetts, the State Department of Education received a hefty grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation 
to help them create their grant proposal that went to race to the top in order to get the race to the top money. So there was there was greasing of the wheels at every level of this. So then my last note went on a sort of naive question. What the heck is behind this? <laughs> People ask me that all the time. Um, I never like to give an opinion, so let me, let me, uh, there's actually a document called What Does It Mean to Be College and Work Ready? It is written by the National Center for Education and the Economy. The head of that group is a guy named Mark Tucker. Mark Tucker was actually, remember we talked about goals 2094? Mark Tucker was instrumental in that. So he's been involved for 12, more than 20 years. Um, if you Google him, if you Google the words Dear Hillary, you will actually find what he wrote about how education in America should look. And the National Center's document, What Does It Mean to Be College and Work Ready, says that that means that you're able to go to a community college, not a four-year college and not a university, and that you need Algebra One by the end of your sophomore year in high school. Because the document says that it is, since only 5% of the careers available need Algebra Two or beyond, it is a waste to teach that because you don't need it for your career. So it's, it's, when they say college and career ready, it's the skills you need to do your job, and that's all. I have a question here. I'll go around the room. Uh, I just wanted to make a statement. This morning there was an interview on Fox 25 with Gene Levanchi and Mitchell Chester, our esteemed uh, head of the Department of Education. It was a very softball interview. I have yet to see it on their uh, web page or on their Twitter page. As a group, you need to contact them, tweet them, email them, call their news desk, find their number, and demand it's put on there so we can comment on it. I had a tweet a conversation, a Twitter conversation, I hate that term, Twitter conversation with Gene today, and I, I commented on what a softball interview that was. I could have swore they were in the same room, they would have hugged and kissed. It, uh, it, was, it was poor, but I did feed him some information from the Pioneer Institute, and at the end of my conversation, he was thankful and he said it was helpful, because I think he's clueless, and I think a lot of people in the media are clueless of what's going on. And one more thing, when, as she was saying, you gotta go out to your community and get, into the, get involved. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. That is very important. A lot of people get are off not- Facebook. No. Get off Facebook, get, and as, as she says, get in front of the library, get in front of the supermarket. Get in front of people. They need to see your eyes. They need to see your passion. Exactly. Although, you know, I am, as I said this morning, an FBI, full-blooded Irish. So my husband says you can always tell an Irish girl, but you can't tell her much. I'm half Italian. And so I'm always comfortable talking to people because it's part of who I am. And I'm in Boston. So that means a lot of you have that heritage. So you should be very comfortable talking to people because you know the Barney's General is part of our heritage. So it isn't hard to chat with people. Just begin a conversation. Yes, sir. Um, my wife and I pulled our son out of public school. We put him in a Catholic school. We then pulled him out of that Catholic school and took another Catholic school because the first Catholic school obviously was beginning to get down that road. Yes. Um, a lot of the, what I have seen and what I have researched that I've done, if you take state or federal money, you've got to play ball with this thing. So on the orientation day for the second school, I put my hand up and I asked, I said, so what are you going to do about Common Core? And they said, don't worry, our standards are always going to be higher than Common Core. And then I looked at him like he didn't really answer my question. So he came to me afterwards and he said, you need to understand something. We're having trouble getting textbooks that teach to anything but Common Core. That's true. Is, is that? Yes. My husband teaches in a Catholic school. Um, they actually had a workshop on Common Core, but I went, so they decided not to do it. And afterward, some of the teachers came up to me and said that the new textbooks, they're taping up the old ones and using them again because the old ones are clean. So you may be encouraging schools to use older books that aren't Common Core aligned so that your kids actually get a real education. So, so when you get to that point where You've already done what you suggested about pulling them out mm -hmm. and putting them in a private school. But this private school takes some kind of money. They all do. They have to. How do you then, what, what's your suggestion or recommendations on how as a parent that you can make enough noise in the right direction to throw up a wall against it? 
private institutions run more on donors than anything else. So if you start talking to donors, you can make a difference. For example, I live right outside of Pittsburgh, and the Bishop, Bishop of Pittsburgh actually wrote a letter saying, yeah, I understand that a lot of folks want to do Common Core, but I want to remind you all, I'm the bishop, I'm in charge, and it's forbidden in the Pittsburgh diocesan school system. The Bishop of Madison, Wisconsin did it, the Bishop of LaCroix did it, and there's two others that have done that as well. So bishops do have the authority to say absolutely not, and the, the federal language does not mandate that the private schools do it. You need to look at your state language, and your state rep would know more about that than I do, but in many states, they're specifically exempted from this mandate. So you need to look at, and everything I've seen says public schools only in Massachusetts. So I, when they tell you that they're required, they're not. I just want to make one mention to John and other people, but not, it's not in this area. There is a new, Catholic school that opened because of four mothers that were upset about Common Core. It opened up a year ago. This is in the second year. It's in Natick. It's called St. Bernard Bernadette's? St. Bernadette's. Bernadette's. Yeah. Okay. It is in there. If you read their website, it says it is a non-Common Core school. And they give you their Sandra Stosky's on the board. They do rich literature. And whatever they do, they do not have books that are common core books. So you are going to see a lot more pop-ups throughout the state here that are going to be non-common core. So if you keep talking to your fellow neighbors, it may a school may just you may be able to do a start a school yourself, maybe a small school, but this school now had to move out of its original surroundings because it grew so much right. in a year. So what you're going to find now is where there is an opportunity, we may get the school. It's called the marketplace. Amazing, huh? Yes. <laughs> question, if you can say Yes. Sure. Hi. I just have a question, just because I know you're doing the testing. Are you familiar with the, um, the CCSSO Innovative Lab Network at all? Yeah. SLDF that is actively working to defend the ability of homeschool parents to not have to do Common Core. Additionally, we looked at the SAT test. A number of colleges were so appalled they're no longer requiring it for admissions. So you can get around it even to get into colleges because a lot of colleges have been so appalled at the dumbing down of the SAT that they've dropped it completely. So homeschoolers at this moment are not mandated. You do need to look at the books. Some of the homeschool um, Education networks are making their books Common Core compliant, others are not, so you need to look at the books, but you're not mandated. Yes, sir? Uh, yeah, um, you said that an assessment test has to be valid, reliable, and independent to be good. Yes. Um, you found, almost made me think it's almost impossible to be that way, an assessment test, and what MCAS is an assessment test. Yes. Right? And that's improved our educational system in Massachusetts, relative to other states. I would agree on that. So is it, I'm questioning everything now. That's fine. Uh, well, that's a good thing to do. Let me give you um, an appropriate use of assessments. When you were in school, you probably took either the Iowa test, the Metropolitan test, the Stanford test, or the California test. They were the four big, uh, they were called achievement tests. They were the four big companies. They were independent. Your district paid those companies I'm making a number up, obviously, $100. They didn't care how you did. They just came in and gave the test, 
and then they left. They had no connection to your district whatsoever. They had no financial interest in your district or your state. They were strictly a testing company. So they met the we're independent standard. 